Title IX. What? You remember the law, created in 1972 by pioneering men and women oh, yes, of course. who both wanted to make it an even and competitive playing field in sports for young girls and women for generations to come? Well, with one stroke of the pen, Fuck. dementia made that all go away with dudes who like to feel pretty saying, hey, you know what? Uh, well, excuse me, it's ma'am. You're entitled to. Fucking pronouns! I'm Jasper Gonzo and this. Okay. <laughs> but remember, kids, trans women are women. It is ma'am. Now you're an asshole. It's what's next. What's up everyone, Jazz Braganzo, what's next, your daily dose, hope you guys are feeling good today, of course it is Saturday night, it is nightfall, and it is the weekend edition, normally I don't do these this late, normally it's like one in the morning, one in the afternoon, but um, I have some things to do, well, I'm here for you. In the three and a half years that Joe Dementia has been in the White House, he has done some profoundly stupid shit, profoundly, add this amongst the many stupid things that this stupid dementia riddled old man has done what a fucking joke and here we go this comes out of our kick biden's title nine ruled as discrimination against women through the back door riley Gaines and paula scanlon but before we hear from them a little background 50 years ago Pioneer women and men fought the Title IX's passage. They knew their efforts would pay off by giving girls and women like us the opportunity our mothers and grandmothers didn't have. The results have been profound. An entire youth system, ecosystem, for girls has blossomed, giving countless females uh, the same chance to develop skills, critical skills, and achieve equality in the workplace with their male counterparts. A recent Ernst Young study found that in the full, a fully 94% of female business executives participated in sports as girls, making sports participation the most straightforward path to business success as an adult. A former collegiate swimmers, uh, they know the achievement does not happen by accident. It takes work, it takes work, dedication, perseverance, sacrifices. They learned as little girls, waking up at 4.30 in the morning to go swim practice and then returning to the pool that afternoon to keep working to master their craft. They keep learning this in a recruiting process where they learned at each uh, a place of swim teams of uh, our dream schools where they could compete and continue to pursue their dreams on a higher level. Despite this, it was not until 2020 that they realized how much they had been taken for granted and the opportunities made available to them by Title IX. In the most infamous picture in recent sports history, you have a dude who feels pretty in Will Thomas, balls hanging, defeats one Riley Gaines, in an NCAA championship swimming race, taking the gold and telling the other women to go fuck themselves. Today, as they approach the 52nd anniversary of the landmark anti-discrimination law, women's athletic opportunities are under attack. The Dementia Administration has proposed new rules that would require schools to allow trans mental athletes to compete on a team that's aligned with their gender identity instead of by birth. Unless the school can demonstrate that allowing males who identified as women onto women's teams would undermine the fairness in competition or safety. But what about the fairness of opportunity? What could possibly be more unfair than telling a female athlete she didn't make the team because of some dude in a dress? It is precisely the form of unfairness, lack of equal opportunity uh, that Title IX was passed to address. And yet the proponents of this new rule are perfectly happy in taking opportunities from women and giving them to men. Because these days... The best women, they're men. Sadly, the party that once took pride in advancing increased opportunities for women is now achieving and now actively working to undermine these benefits in the name of, quote, inclusion, diversity, equity. In fact, all 51 Democratic U.S. Senators Center, recently voted in opposition of the Protection of Women and Girls in Olympic and Amateur Sports Amendment, which would help uh, protect the female sports category in the, at the Olympic level. The irony should be painfully obvious to anyone with a brain, a heart, or... Let's see, room temperature above 70 degrees. For us, it's not about a theoretical issue. It's one that was forced in our faces, and we mean literally. Not only that we were forced to compete against male swimmer Will Thomas, we were also forced to watch a 6'4 six four, uh, six four, uh, six four male, with male, uh, with male balls, yes, he had balls, undressed in their locker room, to be perfectly clear. 
the anatomy that we and many other women were forced to confirm that he is a dude. We were constantly informed that there were no protections in place for us to undress that any uh, male merely claiming to be have identity a woman didn't have access to. What, what, what are you saying? That a man just can't walk into a woman's space, drop his clothes, drop trowel, and say, look at this, and if you don't like it, look at it again. We were not looking for sympathy in our stories. We were looking for action. President Joe Dementia has proposed changing Title IX to allow men who identify as women, yes, men who feel pretty, transmentals, to participate and destroy the integrity of women's sports. Not only is wildly unfair, it is discrimination on the basis of sex. Enough is enough. We were gifted by uh, Title IX for those who came before us, and we will fight relentlessly to gift it to young girls who have dreamt to win at elite level like we once did. Together. Now... When, when women, women are, are really under attack in a different, different way, like we, we haven't necessarily seen before, before they've abandoned us. Or maybe they're still they're saying they are, but their actions are not following their words. Same thing with the NCAA. You know, you mentioned Title IX, right? Title IX, that national championships we competed at with, of course, Thomas, again, male, uh, with the women. It was the 50th anniversary of Title IX. And so the NCAA was passing out these shirts that said Title IX, uh, 50 years of creating opportunities for women, uh, as if that's what they were doing at this meet, and it, the hypocrisy and the double standard, and, and really the emotional blackmail, the propaganda behind that, it blew my mind. So you're exactly right about these brands. Yeah, um, I mean, the brands are all doing Women's History Month campaigns. They pretend to champion women, but I think outside of even this issue, I think if you look at, at Nike in particular, um, they treat women with absolute disregard internally. There have been, you know, massive um, scandalous reports in the New York Times, you know, not like in these French publications about the way Remember female Dylan executives Mulvaney? have been treated. Nike and signed him. And they, they signed that trans kind of mental to put on their clubs. wares, really to put on women's stuff. clothes and uh, women's Alice athletic Felix, gear. You know, the world's best woman at the time. Her contract wasn't renewed with maternity pathetic. protections. And Absolutely Mary Kane, pathetic. Who had been the best. This is something that is 50 years old. You know, celebrate 50 year anniversary. Two years ago, handing out shirts and what have you. Yes, we're for women. I'll use all these corporations. Yes, we're for women, not women. Women. And good. And good for them. But at the same time, every single corporate entity. Name it. Nike, Champion, Reebok, uh, Adidas, you name it. Adidas, they had a dude who feels pretty, suffering from a severe mental illness, you know, wearing a th Adidas gear. As I said, Dylan Mulvaney. Nike signed him. That lasted for about 15 minutes before, before it blew up in Nike's face and they lost almost $3 billion dollars in sale revenue. Of course, they recovered it just as quickly only because it was Nike and it wasn't going to last too long. But this shit has to stop. It has to stop. I mean, I'm proud of Riley Gaines and, and, uh, and other women who have stepped up, including uh, Todd Ernst's daughter, uh, Ernst's daughter, um, of course, Todd Ernst from the Steve Day Show. Um, his daughter is involved in the lawsuit along with Riley Gaines against the NCAA. And, uh, and she shouldn't even have to come to this. It's amazing. All the stories that have been done, say, in the last year alone, regarding dudes who have severe mental illness, who think they're women, who believe that they can sell everything from Hershey's Candies, which we saw, Dylan Mulvaney with Bud Light, Dylan Mulvaney with uh, Nike, uh, the dude from Adidas, the absolute trash baggery the lengths that these corporations will bend over grab both ankles spread their cheeks and say give it to me and give it to me hard for this segment of the population this not this 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 I've said this in prior videos before when is this shit going to stop when is it going to stop? The destruction of our kids, the destruction of women's sports, 
When is it going to stop? It's amazing. But yet, not one woman's group. You know, where is the National Organization for Women? Where are they? Where are all the feminazis? Where are they? They should be lining up in droves in front of Congress, slamming Joe Biden because of this bullshit, because of this nonsense. But what do you hear? Chirp, chirp, chirp. The hypocrisy, the f***ing hypocrisy that goes on in these women's groups is atrocious. These women's groups are absolute trash. Absolute trash. Not all, but overwhelming most. And with that being said, I'm Jazz Bergonzo. This is What's Next. Want to see more like this? Please leave a comment below. Like it, share, subscribe to it. Hit that notification bell so you guys never miss a thing. Continue watching the show. Appreciate you guys watching. Spread the word. And we'll see you next time. Peace.